So we'll start off with number one. The first question is, your title on LinkedIn says your job title at Button is co-founder slash product. What does that mean? And then to follow up with that, what do your days look like? Yeah, absolutely. So that's a great question. Um, so starting with the co-founder, that one's being a little more self-explanatory. Uh, so JT and I, back you know, 18 months ago now, uh, decided that the world needed a company like Button. And so we set off with uh, a plan to you know, change the medical supply and healthcare space. And so I get to put the title of co-founder next to my name now. Um, but, you know, the other thing that means is that uh, a lot of the decisions that were made early on that we decided were not such good ideas, I got to take credit for those, but I also get to take credit for some of the good ones that ended up panning out. Um, product is a little more of a wide ranging term. Um, so, you know, I am largely responsible for the offering that we're giving to our customers, um, you know, majority of that is focusing on kind of the digital perspective and the e-commerce perspective of that. Um, so making sure that our e-commerce store is reflecting the vision that we have for change in the medical supply and healthcare space. Um, but it's also working cross-functionally with all the different teams. So I get to work with, you know, our vendor success team, our you know supply chain team, our sales team, digital team. Um, so it's a bit of a catch-all phrase of get to work cross-functionally with everyone. So kind of a, uh, a good lead into what does my day look like? Uh, my day is never boring. Uh, I have lots of meetings talking with a lot of different people at our company about the issues they're facing and uh, you know getting feedback from our customers. So a lot of what I do is trying to you know prioritize time and prioritize efforts to deliver the most value to our customers and give them the best experience possible. Very cool. Number two is why are you excited about bringing innovation into the medical supply industry? Yeah, so I think the kind of obvious answer to that question is this is an incredibly important industry for, I mean, not only our country, but for the entire world. Um, I think COVID was evidence of that, that, you know, the health and well being of our people is probably one of the most important assets we have. Um, and so, to me, this is one of those things that should get you know the smartest minds, the most resources, and the most time spent trying to make it as efficient and equitable for everyone as possible. Um, you know, I, I come from a technology background, and it still to me blows me away how much time we spend on things that might be considered frivolous, and then yet we don't put our time towards you know the health, well-being, uh, and safety of our people. And so you know when we were kind of made aware of the scale of effect that, you know, medical supply and healthcare had on the well-being of our country and then kind of how antiquated it is in a lot of ways and how much room there is for progress. It made me really, really excited that, you know, we could have such a big effect on such an important industry. Um, you know, coming from a technical and engineering background too, you know, the name of the game is problem solving. And so when we found out about this problem, realized how particularly large it was, uh, very, very excited at the notion of getting to uh, solve it. All right. Number three, two years ago, right? Well, a little less than. You said 18 months about right now. Um, but so 18 months ago, could you have predicted Button would be where it is now? And then to follow up, what do you think has been the most integral part of the journey so far? So short answer to the first question is no. Uh, <laughs> you know, I don't think that anybody could have predicted kind of the rapid scale and pace that we've been able to achieve at Button. And I mean, in such a large part, that's just because we have such smart people who have made the choice to come and work with us and are incredibly just lucky for that. Um, but, you know, JT and I were living in a basement. We started this and we had essentially two laptops. Um, and so if you had told 18 or 18 months ago me that, you know, we would be where we are now, um, I might have just looked at you dumbfounded. Uh, um, but, you know, I think the I think the thing that's been most integral is just the passion that, you know, JT, myself, you know, kind of the entire team as a whole from, you know, first employees to the folks who just joined us last week, everybody comes in with so much passion and just kind of electricity to solve this problem. And that's the thing that drives us forward by far and away the most. Um, 
you know, also taking it back to you know, why we're so excited about bringing innovation to the medical supply industry. I think if you spend enough time around the people at this company, that passion for how big of a opportunity, but also a problem this is, is infectious. And so it sort of motivates people to give it their all. And I think that's been absolutely the most integral, um, integral factor to getting to where we are today. All right. Good people. Good people. <laughs> um, <laughs> the next question to the last three are, are a bit more about you rather than the company. So the first one is, what books and podcasts are you currently consuming? Yeah, we'll, we'll start with books. Um, so I, I've always loved reading. Um, I specifically love history. Um, so two books that I've read recently um, have kind of oddly enough had a like a finance economics uh, flavor to it. I don't really know why, but just sort of been going down that rabbit hole. Um, but one one I read recently was a book called The Man Who Solved the Market, and it's about uh, Jim Simons and Renaissance Capital, um, which is a hedge fund. And it was the first hedge fund to essentially adopt technology as a leader in the strategy for their fund. Um, so I thought it was really interesting because they built a fund in an industry that was relatively non-technical and they made it technical. And, uh, you know, in retrospect, as I'm talking through this, now, I guess it make sense a little bit <laughs> that one resonated with me um but then uh also recently read a book called uh the house of morgan which is kind of just a historical biography of the jp morgan chase bank and family um and so yeah you know i enjoy those more for the historical perspective so those have kind of been where my uh the books next to my bed um and then podcast wise you know kind of staying on the history flavor but a little more lighthearted. Um, I've been listening to a BBC podcast called You're Dead to Me. Um, and besides having a great title, it's a great podcast. They essentially each episode pick a historical figure um, and they take a comedian, a historian, and they do a deep dive into that historical figure's life. And they take like, you know, pretty serious topics and they make them really funny and digestible. Uh, <laughs> so highly recommend everyone check it out if you get a chance. Yeah, that's a stellar name right there. I might have yeah. to look at that. <laughs> the next one is, how do you unwind after a long week? Yeah, so this is one that I'm still kind of perfecting, I would say, and uh, ever-changing. Uh, go back to reading. You know, reading is one of those things that I, you know, I can sit down and read a book for an hour. I'm just in such a more relaxed place. Um, so I spend a lot of time reading on the weekends. Um, I try to spend a lot of time with you know friends and family whenever possible. Um, you know we here at Button are very very busy, and so any opportunity I get to you know go be with friends and family that I uh, might not get during the week, uh, it's great, great use of time on the weekend. Um, and then you know I'm a big fan of spending my Sundays trying to kind of get caught up on things. And so you know if that's maybe doing a little laundry, doing a little work, uh, I'll feel so much better going into the week. So yeah, that's kind of the way I unwind. All right. Last one is, if you could use only one word for the rest of your life, what would it be? This is such a hard question. Um, but yeah, it, you know, in thinking about this one, and this might sound a little funny, but I think the word I would actually choose is help. <laughs> you know, it's a very dynamic word. Uh, <laughs> I feel like I could uh, use it in a lot of different scenarios, but you know, bringing it back to button, I think the lesson kind of learned is that you can't solve every problem by yourself. It's just impossible. It's not scalable. And the most valuable asset anybody can have is not being afraid to ask for help. Um, and so, you know, I think that applies to a lot of other things outside of business as well, is that if you just kind of put the ego aside for a quick second and decide to ask for help, 99% of the time, the person you're asking will say yes and will uh, help you get to the right answer. And then you'll also save a lot of time because you're not wasting it trying to solve it yourself. So in a goofy way, I'd say help also, if you know there's any sort of like physical danger for me, help is also a great one too. So go with that. <laughs>